What's going on, vinyl community? Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. In today's video, I am doing yet another record store vlog. Um, this is kind of an impromptu visit. Um, I'm heading over to Atlantic City to pick up my godmother for the Easter weekend, and I figured since I was approaching the area where the record store is, I figured I'd leave a little early and spare some time to head on over to the record store and see what's there. Um, I'm not really expecting anything too crazy. Um, I know record store day has passed, and perhaps there's some leftover titles there that might be of some interest. And if you've been watching my channel lately, I've gotten more into bootlegs, so perhaps I'll find some bootlegs that catch my eye and I might want for my collection. Uh, no preconceived notions, so without further ado, let's go in, shall we? It's nice that these guys always greet me every time I come here. How's it going, man? Alright, so let's see what we're dealing with. Oh, interesting. Bowie well, we Pinup's picture disc. Got the Devo box, Doctor Who. Surprising, for a week after record store day, there's a lot of stuff. Ooh, check this out. That's really nice. Case frilly picture desk. Brian May 12 inch. Really nice to find that. Old dirty bastard. Lou Reed. Got this one. Rush picture disc. I actually got my godmother this. Tiny Tim. Wow, you two did not sell. Here's the Bowie seven inch Saxon box. And I believe that is the Aretha Franklin box. Interesting. Definitely gonna come through this and see what I can snag. If you've been watching the vlogs by now, you know it's almost like a routine to check to see if there's any new Floyd titles and nothing really new in terms of like the uh, reissues and such, but see if there's like any interesting oddities and whatnot. Rarities. This one's been here for like the longest time. I think I may have listened to a, a sample of this just to see what it sounded like. Flowers and vegetables. Covers the more Sid Barrett type stuff, demos and studio stuff. Or, uh, festival boot. This is one I've seen frequently. This is the live in New York City one from 77. Animals tour. Here's another notable one. Moonchild archives. It's kind of more so the um, 66, 67 singles and studio stuff. Best of Floyd. I don't know if this is a... Um, not sure if this is like an original pressing or it might be a newer unofficial release. Something cool though. BBC stuff from 68-69. Gilmore. This is a really cool find. This has not left the store for as long as I can remember. This is the Analog Productions um, Used to Death. Kind of high in price, but who knows, maybe it might drop one day. Still waiting for that day. Mm. 
it, it was, was like I remember when I was going through the footage uh, for the last um, record store vlog I did, and I noticed there was a record in this that I did not catch when I was flipping through. I'm going to see if it's still here. Alright, what do you want to do with your stuff? Alright, I think it might be in this selection here. If it's not here, I'm, I won't be shocked, but still, it would be interesting to still see it. Aha! Uh -huh. Here it is. Nice. Hmm, here's one that slipped in here. Some of the standard reissues. Here's an interesting one. Get this out. Uh, ABC 74, the Cleveland, Ohio radio broadcast. I have a variation of this show, and um, it's really, really good. There's some songs on here. Um, Fancy Dancer and Garden Road. Those were never recorded in studio, and those are really good live versions. Here's the uh, Sickness X1 EP from Record Store Day, I believe it was 2015. This is kind of one I've been kind of keeping an eye on. Lady Gone Electric, 74. Here's another common one. This is Missouri, 1980. I think I might have something from that show in my collection. A couple more reissues. St. Louis, this is another standard one here. Blue Sparkle one, I have that. Not too bad stuff. So of course it's fun to collect and all, but the most important thing is caring for your records. The store offers quite the variety of cleaning supplies, cartridges, head shells, replacement needles, all kinds of other electronics. I'm kind of curious on the record clan. What do you guys think? Is it worth it? I may have to swing by next time to pick it up if it's, uh, if it's a viable uh, option to have. See what's going on in the new metal section. If there's anything notable? Let's see, there's the new Ghost album. This they must have gotten recently. This is the picture disc of Opus Eponymous. It looks amazing, but I mean, I'm not one for playing picture discs. If anything, it's more of like a display thing. But I do love the uh, the back cover there. That just looks so badass. Maiden. This is a newer bootleg, the 2016 tour sampler. So this is essentially all of the tracks off of the latest album, Book of Souls, played live, which is pretty cool. An England picture disc. Let me have some of the standard reissues. See, this is from Portland, 1982. This one has been here for the longest time. Even before I got really into collecting, I would always see this. This is from the um, Japanese tour with Paul Diano. Picture disc of peace of mind. Some Megadeth. Let's see what's going on with Metallica. Right, the lightning picture disc. Lords of Summer. This is from a Record Store Day Black Friday several years ago. What's this from? Let's see what it says. This is cool to see. So this is the Garage Days uh, Revisited um, EP, and this is the indie exclusive on orange vinyl. I'm shocked this has not been snagged. Interesting. And then we have the uh, the picture disc. I don't know if this was exclusive on the band's website or whatever. I'm not sure, but that's really, really cool to find. And then there's also some various art prints and posters that you can 
put on your wall to complement your vinyl listening room or wherever you have your setup at. There's some flags here as well. Really nice. See what's going on with the old Genesis stuff here. There's a MoFi version of Trick of the Tail. This is really cool to find, and also this album was my introduction to the band. It's like a bootleg from 73, 74. GP. Hmm. Looks like a bootleg. This is cool to find. This is a Japanese nursery crime from 78. Hmm. Promo for the lamb. Three signs live. I think I have this somewhere deep within my dad's personal collection. This is the 12-inch for Illegal Alien. Here's a uh, compilation, well, not a compilation, but it's essentially from Genesis to Revelation. Genesis has through Emerald City. Looks like it might be a bootleg. The rarest. Ooh, this looks interesting. Hmm. Various live cuts and BBC stuff. Interesting. Here's some cool collectibles. We have the new Iron Maiden remasters and statues. We've got some Floyd puzzles. And here we have some CD bootlegs. Right off the bat, there's Bob Dylan, there's some Floyd, there's a Greta Van Fleet one. ELP. This is cool, that's the uh, Jethro Tull 25th Anniversary Box Set. Uh, that's the Pink Floyd Shine On box there. There's the Yes uh, Studio albums, 69 to 87. That's really cool, that's the Aerosmith Box of Fire. Nirvana, Ramon, Sabbath, all kinds of good stuff. It's best to head out of here while my uh, stack is small and doesn't expand anymore. Until next time. Okay, so I just left the store, just got in my car, and I'm going to show you guys what I picked up. Um, I kind of had the intention all along to pick up uh, one or two things. Uh, I ended up leaving with two, and I'm going to show you guys them right now. Um, the first one I'm going to show is one that I had my eye on the last time that I was in the store when I did my trades and finds. Uh, video and I was kind of worried if it was still gonna be here uh, mainly because with record store day You know aside from the exclusive releases people just buy records in general And I was kind of worried if this was gonna be snagged and luckily it was still sitting there And I'm very glad to have it in my collection now and I'll also give a little backstory behind the particular pressing that I have so this is Live at Third Man Records by Jack White. This is his first ever uh, solo live performance after the White Stripes had disbanded and he was about to uh, embark on his uh, first solo album called Blunderbuss. Uh, this was released through Third Man as part of their vault subscription package which is like a quarterly thing where you get a 12 inch release a 7 inch and you also get like an exclusive merch item and those like after those things come out um the resale value is absolutely high and people sell them for high price tags because yes they are limited and the releases are great but considering how late i got into vinyl collecting and also when third man started in 2009 i was definitely behind on some vault packages that had come out so i'm not all for spending the Boku bucks on trying to get those releases and just it's just not for me but it but they're cool though like there's various white stripes recordings and other things from the other bands that Jack has
was done. But anyways, this is a kind of pirated release, uh, which came out of the UK from what I was able to research on Discog some time ago. Um, the original official Third Man release had like um, a lenticular cover. Uh, with Jack like in this suit and then he has like an all-black outfit with an electric guitar This is just him with the suit and the acoustic uh, But regardless, I mean I've read some like reviews like oh, it's not official Don't go for it and some people say that it sounds decent uh, But look, I'm just very happy to have this really really nice release and also I'm a Jack White fan And it's just nice to have a live album of his uh, because I don't think he's ever done a live album officially It's always been through the vault um Decent cover. Um, doesn't look pixelated. It looks rather decent. Uh, also comes with the gatefold, which was featured in the official version. All kinds of photos from the show. Now, the only drawback is that um, it doesn't come on the colored vinyl that it comes in on the official version. Uh, but just standard black uh, replicates the labels. So... If one didn't know better, this could be kind of deceiving as an official release, but I'm just glad to have it. And this also does come, if I can dig it out. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Oh, and it's trying to escape the sleeve. It also does come with the 7-inch, which did appear in the vault that this main release appeared in. And it also comes with a Third Man Records vault 7-inch sleeve. So really, really nice and um, an interesting piece to have in my collection. And I am indeed very happy to own it. Put this back in and then I'll show you the other thing that I got. Now, as you saw in the video already, this is a record that I remember I saw while I was editing my last vlog. And for some reason, I just did not catch it with my own eyes when I was filming during that time and it was still there and I decided to snag it. I kind of thought about it because I had purchased a lot of records recently by this artist but considering that it is limited and numbered and colored vinyl uh, I think it was the prime time I would say. So this is called Meltdown with the Ramones. Uh, this is a 10 inch EP which came out back in 1980. This is a like UK kind of release. It never made it to the States. Uh, you get four tracks on here. You get, I just want to have something to do here today, gone tomorrow. I want to be your boyfriend and questioningly, um, just a reissue of a pretty highly sought after EP. As the hype sticker states there, um, it's a 10-inch reissue, available for the first time since its uh, initial release, and it's also cut at 45 RPM for top quality sound. And this is also limited to 5,000 copies on navy vinyl. And my copy here, see if you can get that, there you go. Try to focus in on that. That is copy number 3,201. And I'm going to open it up for you guys, see what it looks like with the colored vinyl and all. Try to uh, salvage the hype sticker as well. I might flash forward through this bit. Or maybe not. Okay, so we are in. Now this came out back in... When was this? This was definitely several years ago. Does it say here? doesn't I'm not quite sure I don't know if this was for record store day or Black Friday I'm not quite certain I'll have to do some research uh, but here is the backside you get a picture of the band there here's the lyrics to questioningly and then this was the catalog at the time so end of the century had just come out let's take it out of the sleeve it comes in a paper sleeve I'm gonna try my best not to scuff it and ooh, check this out that is a gorgeous piece of navy blue vinyl. Kind of looks marble. You see you get little flecks of black and white in there. Looks nice. Uh, you got the classic Sire Records label. Let's uh, see if I can get any indication on who mastered it and where it was pressed. Looks like this may have been pressed over at Rainbow, I think. Very well could have been. Regardless, I'm just happy to own it and... um. Definitely a cool release to have, and considering, you know, that it's limited and this and that, uh, it was definitely an impulse buy for me, and I'm very glad that it was still there for me to add it in my collection. 
And there you go. That is my impromptu visit to the record store on yet another record store vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.